Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmomaids.wordpress.com. Last week I shared with you our relaxed homeschool curriculum for next year for my children who will be going into kindergarten, second, and third grade. So this week I decided that I'm going to share our very relaxed homeschool curriculum for my children who will be going into fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. And this is Luke, and he is the one going into fifth grade, and he asked if he could be in the video today. So here he is. So you can say hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Okay. So as I said in my other video for my younger children, if you came here looking for a, a curriculum layout of tons and tons of textbooks, you're not going to find that here. As a matter of fact, my middles, which is how I classify the children in these grades, they will not be using any textbooks at all because they just don't work well for us in our house. Now we do use homeschooling resources, but none of them will be classified as textbooks or workbooks. So just keep that in mind as I show you our choices for next year. Okay, now first of all, I wanna point out that when it comes to language arts, I am not one of those parents who um, separates everything. If you hear that, it's like 50 mile per hour winds today. So anyway, um, I'm not one of those parents who separates everything into separate subjects for language arts because, you know, there are so many parts of language arts. You know, there's writing and reading and even research some people use. Um, what else did I not say? Phonics. Um, reading comprehension, but I don't know if I'm, I don't even remember if I listed all of them, but there are so many facets of language arts. And I know that even when I first started homeschooling, I did separate everything out and we would do them almost every day, or we had certain days of the week where we would do certain things. And as relaxed homeschoolers now, we really do try to keep things more holistic, which means that we try to integrate everything together as naturally as possible. So the one thing that I do teach separately, now I didn't always teach this separately, is spelling. And the reason that we actually started teaching this separately is because not all kids are natural spellers. And I have realized that now. I was one of those kids when I was, in, when I was growing up in school that I didn't have to study for spelling tests. I, I just knew how everything was spelled, so I spelled it correctly. But that is not true for all children, and it is not true for all of my children. So I found that doing spelling separately has really helped my children to know how to well, spell things right. So now what we're gonna be using next year, and what we actually just started using within the past two weeks, because I just got it, is natural speller. Now, if you've been here before, you know that I tweak things a lot, and I've done that with this too, because I'm going to be honest with you. Um, Natural Speller was recommended to me um, by someone because they had good word lists and they had lots of activities. And to me, as a unit study mom, when I hear the word activities, I'm thinking like unit study style activities, you know, fun hands-on activities to integrate, you know, spelling. That's what I was expecting. And so what I actually found in Natural Speller is it's not so much what I would consider to be activities as more spelling exercises. So what I decided that I'm going to do is they do have great word lists. Um, and right here, I just opened right up to Luke's. So this is grade five. And they have word lists for kindergarten. Oh, you want to see what your words are. Um, they have them from kindergarten all the way up through eighth grade. They have word lists. And then they do have activities that your children can do to help them learn the words. What we are going to be doing though is just using the word lists. Um, right now what my kids do, depending on their age, they just write them two or three times each four, four times, four days out of the week. And we're going to forego the spelling exercises because although a lot of parents might genuinely like these, when I was looking at them, they really did remind me too much of school. And we're trying to avoid making our, our home look like a classroom. We really want to make learning a more natural family experience. And, and I just, you know, if I wanted to send my kids to school, I would. So we, we're just skipping that part, but we are using the word list because they really are excellent. Now for our other language arts areas, they are all going to be covered with various forms of notebooking. Um, one of the types of notebooking that we do is copy work. And they just use little composition books for that. 
And that is what they're doing this year. We're gonna continue on next year because it works. And they are still right now working through Shel Silverstein. And we will continue to do that until they don't want to anymore. Now I do tell them that if they have other books that they would rather use for, for copy work, they can do that. But so far, they, they really do like Shel Silverstein and that's what they've been doing. So you might be wondering, what, what good is copy work for, for language arts? Well, what copy work is good for is it shows your children proper spelling, proper punctuation, proper sentence structure. It shows them the various forms that a sentence can take. And when it comes to doing things, you know, like with Shel Silverstein, it shows them poetry. So it's not something that they would typically do, you know, every single day. So right there, just in this copy work, you have tackled a lot of the different areas of language arts. And what I really also like about um, copy work is that when it comes to writing, which we'll get to later, when it comes to writing, I want my kids to, to actually enjoy writing. And what I found is that if I am nitpicking over every little thing in their writing, you know, misspelled words and commas and just different things, different errors that I found, it can kind of make them lose confidence in their writing skills. So what I really focus on with writing is their content. And when it comes to the copy work, that's how we really focus on the mechanics. Because if you show your children something in the copy work that they have missed or that they have done incorrectly and, and, and show them what they did wrong, it, it doesn't, you know, um, it doesn't hurt them as much because it's not their work. It's just something that they were copying but they still understand how to do it in the future and to keep an eye out for that. So that's why we use copy work. Um, another notebooking form that we use for language arts is journaling. Again, just, just uh, composition books. And in their journals, what they do is they just write anything that they want to. They can write stories, they can write lists, they can write poems, they can draw a picture and maybe like write a little paragraph or, or possibly a caption um, underneath it, again, depending on their age. But journaling is also something else that my kids really do like to do. It's really, it's free form writing. Think of it as free writing. This is their free writing time. And this particular journal, this is my, my daughter who is, she's in sixth grade this year. This is, um, she usually does creative writing. She really leans towards creative writing. And actually, I will show you that you will see words circled here and under underlined here. And sometimes I do use this um, to teach them parts of speech. You know, like for example, here she has the adjective circled. And on this page here, she has the noun circled. So, or not circled, underlined. But that, that is just another idea that you can use because a lot of people ask me, well, how do you teach grammar? We teach grammar like, like what I just showed you here. Sometimes we will use it for Mad Libs and other times it is actually worked into our unit study activities. Okay, and I also wanna point out that these different forms of notebooking that I'm showing you, they do not do all of these every single day. We, we have a rotation where, you know, they will do journaling one day, copy work the next, and then this next notebook that we're, that I'm going to show you, they do that, and that's in the rotation. And that is their interest-led notebooking, which up to this point has been animal notebooking. And they've been doing this for a while. You can see it's, it says 2017 up there in the corner, which is when she started it. And you can also tell that she's been doing it for a while because it's pretty worn. But rather than changing and putting her into a new binder, we're going to put as many things in here as we can because this is just like her own treasure trove of information. So what I usually have my kids do is they will pick out anything that they want to learn about. I will get them books at the library or sometimes they will watch videos and I just have them notebook about it. And that could be drawing a picture, which at this age, I do not allow them to just draw pictures very often. A lot of times I'll have, I'll let them draw a picture just if they're starting something new. Yeah, I know I'm blocking you, but I'll, I'll get you back in soon. So anyway, um, anyway, so at this age, I'll let them do this once in a while, but it can be cartoons that they're doing. If I hit you in the face with that, I'm sorry. Um, it can be facts, like right here she did rat facts. Um, 
here she she read something in a library book and she started she start she wrote like a little summary of it so again in just as in the the journals in these interest led notebooks they can literally do anything that they want as long as they they show me something that they have learned that day while they were researching this they just have to be able to show me so it could be copy work it could be a list um, and yes, copy work, I, they could actually copy a passage out a, of a library book and maybe um, illustrate it. But again, so right here, they're, they're learning their writing skills and they're learning their research skills. And this is a great thing that you can integrate with science, which yes, this would be science because this is all about animals. Um, you could also integrate it with history, depending on, on what your child is interested in doing. You could integrate it with art. But what happens most of the time is all of the subjects are, are integrated into this because you might not just be talking about animals. There might be a map of where they're found or it might talk about their habitat and, and all of those sorts of things. So just remember that you know our everyday lives are not broken into subjects. So we don't need to look at our, our, our kids' learning as being broken into specific categories because really when you look at life as a whole, it really does include everything. So that is our other way of tackling language arts in this grade. Um, now, they usually do their, their notebooking on their own, obviously, because they all have their own notebooks, and they do math on their own. And up until this point, we have always been huge Life of Fred people. But what we found for the past several months is that Life of Fred it just wasn't working as well for us anymore. Um, so we really decided that we needed to try something new. So what we are doing right now, and I don't have anything to show you because we, they are doing CTC math, which is actually an, an online math program. So if I ever figure out, if I ever get tech savvy enough to figure out how to show you a video of them doing the CTC math, I'm going to do that. I can probably just ask my teenagers to show me how to do that. But CTC math, is is an, an online math program and my kids love it so far it shows a little video first explaining everything it shows examples and then they just have some problems to do afterwards and then if your child wants to do additional problems like that they can click on it and do more and it keeps score and it's just it's a really great it's a really great program so check into it if you're not sure what you want to do for math and i will also say that i am not a big online person when it comes to curriculum. I like to have things in my hand to use, like physically in my hand. Like I don't even use digital books for that reason, which as you can see, and this is after I, I just got rid of a bunch of books. So I don't, I'm not really a big online person, um, which is weird coming from somebody who has a blog and a YouTube channel, but that's true. So I was really stepping outside of my comfort zone to check out CTC math, but I am so glad I did because it's just, it's amazing. Anyway, so again, the notebooking they do by themselves, the math they do individually, everything else we do together. And the way that we usually do everything together in our homeschool is we, we learn with living books. We do a read aloud every single day. We do unit studies and we do interest-led learning. And with all of those three things, living books, unit studies, and interest-led learning, they are all things that, again, bring all of those different subject areas into one like nice piece um, and it, there's there's no breaking apart saying okay now you have to do history now you have to do health now you have to do geography now you have to do science no we just learn together and as we learn together we're hitting all of those things without even trying so one of the ways that we're going to be doing that next year is we're going to be reading together as a read aloud a Clash of Swords in Scotland. And if any of you saw my review or read my review of Case of Adventure, um, I, it was Destination Switzerland. It is the same author. And what this is, is this is a book. Oh, we have such loud motorcycles around here. But anyway, it's a book that you, you read with your children and it even has um, little, at the end of each chapter, let me see if I can find one, little missions for you to do with your kids. And then there is actually a website where you can purchase 
um, a unit study with so many printables that, that you can print up for your kids. It includes links for videos on the particular area that your kids watch. Um, it includes instructions for how to construct a lap book at the end, which the one that we had, I should have brought it out, the one that we had last year for Destination Switzerland was beautiful. So we are really looking forward to doing a Clash of Swords. And I was actually going to do it this year, but our printer broke and it took me forever to buy a new one. So I wasn't able to print out all those papers. So definitely on our list for next year. I cannot wait to do this. Um, another thing that we use is Beautiful Feet Books. And this is something that if you do this all in one shot, it will typically take about a year. In our house, we tend to skip around a lot just because I want to keep their interest. Um, so we actually did start doing this last year, but we usually do it for a few weeks at a time, or we might do a few books at a time. And that is exactly what, what Beautiful Feet Books is. It, it uses living books to teach your kids history. It gives um, really nice questions that you can ask with your kids in order for them to narrate, which, yes, that's another facet of, of language arts is narration when you're doing the read-alouds. It has um, little downloadable maps on the website that you can print up and put in a little notebook. Um, I think there's, oh, there's a timeline for it. So I'm gonna link at the bottom, I did do a video review and a blog review of Beautiful Feet books. So I'm gonna link that in the description box in case you wanna get a closer look at what this is about. But yes, we're gonna be continuing it next year um, because we are still working through this right now. Um, let me see. Oh, and I will also link for the, for the Switzerland unit study like this one. I'm going to put those links in the description box too so that you can check those out as well if you want to. So this next resource looks like it's been through a war. But in our house, you can tell the good resources by how they look. Because if we've had it a while and it still looks pretty much brand new, you know it didn't work for us. If it looks like a truck ran over it, you know that it worked well. And that is the case with our CONUS curriculum. Yes, this is our CONUS curriculum and it's a mess. We've even got pages falling out. I actually am hoping to get this unbound and just put it in a binder. That's on my to-do list. But yes, I have done so many blog posts and videos on CONUS. I mention it all the time. This is another one of those curriculums. It's a unit study curriculum and it's um, it, start, it can start in kindergarten, but it goes all the way up through eighth grade. And I actually tweak it for my older kids as well because there are really great um, activities even for older kids to enjoy. And there are three volumes of CONUS. This is the second volume. We actually completed the first one, and I loved it so much that I went on and got the second one. And I'm going to read to you the unit studies that are in this because there are so many things to choose from. Oh, and I, I will um, also say that this is character-based. So if you look, each unit study falls under the category of a different character trait. So in this volume, we've got inquisitiveness, responsibility, love and generosity, courage, wisdom, and loyalty. And the, the actual unit study topics are research and reference, scientists and scientific method, earth science, continents and cultures, Africa, Australia, weather, explorers, navigation, stars and sailing, detectives, Gen, well, general usually means that it, that general falls under the responsibility unit study. So I think what they mean by general is they will be doing activities that really demonstrate responsibility. But also under that is pet care and dogs, beavers, ants, early settlers. Then there's Christmas unit study, Easter, Valentine's, American Revolution, which I am actually tweaking right now to use with my teenagers. Um, safety, government, founding fathers, constitution, architecture, electoral process, presidents, and citizenship. So as you can see, this really has so many things in it. And each CONUS unit study typically takes about two and a half to three years to get through an entire one. You see, it's, it's thick. It actually takes us a little bit longer than that because we only usually do our unit study um, activities twice a week because that's just how I have the three groups broken up because if I did unit study activities with all three groups every single day I would be homeschooling for 12 hours a day so we can't do it like that so on those days that they are not doing their unit study 
or beautiful feet or a clash of swords on the day that we're not doing those um, activities together my kids are doing interest led learning which basically means that they covered the three R's that day and then they are allowed to do whatever they want the rest of the day that that they're interested in you know that could be crafting that could be watching a video about animals that could be playing outside digging for worms that could be planting seeds um, it's literally what what they do on those days is up to them um, now there are some things I don't allow like my kids I don't let them they do all have their own phones they they don't have plans or anything it's just they pick up the Wi-Fi in our house they're only allowed on their phones Fridays after we're done doing school Saturday and Sunday so during the week they have to do things that are not um, technology related unless they they want to for example take a picture of something or if they if they want to watch a video you know those sorts of things a video um, educational video so anyway anyway yes conus unit study love it and the last thing that we're going to be doing together is once a week nature studies and this is just their nature study journal and this is something else that we just started this new nature study journal we're using these notebooking pages. This is from the free download from notebookingpages.com. So they're just using that. And they're just working in their nature study journals. Um, once a week we go out, sometimes we'll go to a park. I think something just fell. We'll go to a park. We will go to sometimes a creek or just sometimes for a nature walk. The last several weeks, it's been raining every single day that we wanted to go out for nature study. So we've had to do inside activities like painting flower pots or last time I told the kids just to work on these little notebooking pages and my daughter made her own little fish out of felt. But that's something else that we're doing together. And really, that is it. And if you notice, no textbooks, no workbooks, but my kids are learning so much every single day, but we're doing it together and we're doing it in a way that I really think makes more sense than breaking everything apart into books that I think my kids would and I would really find boring. So anyway, but again, remember, this is our homeschool. So if textbooks and workbooks work well for you, keep doing them. Don't stop doing them just because someone else said that, that they don't like doing them. Always do what works for you. So this is just our house. And my kids are very active, aren't you? Climbing the walls all the time. I'm surprised he was able to sit here for this. Anyway, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, um, go ahead and do that. I would love it. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave one. And next week sometime, I'm not going to promise when because I just got a part-time job, so I'm doing that on top of everything else, I'm going to go over the curriculum for next year's high schoolers. So I hope you have a great day.